That is the sound of the bird of trigonometry calling out its beautiful secrets to you. Today we are going to be looking at the trig ratios in right triangles. As you can see right here, we have a right triangle with one particular angle marked theta. This theta will determine where what we could call two of our sides. Now with any right triangle, the side that is across from your right angle, okay, so the right angle is not formed by this side, right? It is directly opposite. It's directly across from here. This is your hypotenuse. This one is unchanging. Your hypotenuse will always be the side that is across from your right angle. And if we call this angle here theta, this is our angle that we are talking about here. This side that directly connects to it, that forms the angle with the hypotenuse, is what we would call our adjacent side. This is our adjacent side. The side that is across from this angle, totally opposite, is the opposite side. The opposite side does not form our angle at all. And it doesn't make a difference um, whether the what the orientation is. So if I rotate it like this, this is still my opposite side because it does not form the angle for theta. This is still my adjacent side because it still touches theta. Even if I do this, my opposites is still all the way across from theta. My adjacent still forms theta. And the hypotenuse is also always unchanging. Okay. In order to apply trig ratios correctly, you need to have a solid grasp of exactly where these guys are. The opposite is always going to be across from your angle. I think if you've got a good grasp on this one, everything else kind of falls into place. Hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degrees as well. This is your longest side, always. Always. All right? With our names in place, we can look and see exactly what these trig relationships are. If I've got a sine of theta, well, that is my opposite side divided by my hypotenuse. If I have the cosine of theta, that is my adjacent side divided by my hypotenuse. If I have the tangent of theta, that is my opposite side divided by my adjacent side. That's where we get that beautiful phrase, SOKATOA. And it stands for all of these. These are the ones we're going to use the most. Your sine is your opposite side divided by your hypotenuse. Okay, just like we said earlier, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, C, is adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse. And TOA, tangent is opposite over adjacent. Tangent, opposite over adjacent. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. That is our mnemonic device to remember these wonderful trig functions. We will a little bit use some of the other trig functions here, such as cosecant. That is just the flip, the reciprocal of sine. Instead, that is just going to be cosecant hypotenuse over opposite. Secant of an angle is going to be the hypotenuse over the adjacent. And cotangent is the adjacent over the opposite. If we know which sides are which, like in this guy here, we can assign numbers. We'll all have numbers down for them. We can figure these all out just like cake. So let's take a look at this guy here. I have to find the sine of theta. Theta's up here. I've got 5 and I've got 4. 
the first thing you should do is label what these are. 5 is across from my right angle here. So I know this is without a doubt going to be my hypotenuse. I hope that P is correct. I'm not good at writing upside down. And I'm going to focus on this angle theta right here. I notice that this other side is totally across from the angle. It is the opposite. So this, I can say, is my opposite side. I don't know what this side is. I don't have a number for it. But I do know that it would be my adjacent side. That's my hypotenuse, opposite, and adjacent. Adjacent, again, forms the angle theta with the hypotenuse. Sine, we look back to Sokotoa, or we look back to our chart, is opposite over hypotenuse. And how about that? I know my opposite is 4, and I know my hypotenuse is 5. So this one would just be sine of theta equals opposite 4 over hypotenuse 5. That, that's a backwards 5. OK, ignore that. It's like 5, five right, right there. Right there. 4 over 5, make it pretty. 4 over 5 is what our sine of theta equals. And we are done. That's it. That's all you need to do to find a trig ratio. Let us do one more to really get this guy down. And then you can practice. All right. Uh, so for this one here, let's say angle theta. Let's put our theta right over there. And let us, for this one, let's find the secant of theta, secant of theta. Okay. This side across from the right angle is my hypotenuse. This one that goes, that's the op total opposite of the angle here, is the opposite. And that means that this one, again, is going to be my adjacent. Hmm. Try writing upside down sometime. It's not easy. OK, adjacent. Opposite, hypotenuse, adjacent. We look back and we see that secant is hypotenuse over adjacent. So my secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent. My hypotenuse, aha, we said that's 11. And my adjacent, we don't know. We don't know. Well, is there any way that we can figure out what this missing side is? Mm, we could use Pythagorean theorem, because this is a right triangle. Our good old a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Yeah? So let's start plugging in what we've got. Hypotenuse is always going to be your c. So uh, we said hypotenuse is 11. I'm going to have 11 squared. And for b, we can put in 7, so 7 squared. And then let's find out what this a is. We square them, we get a squared equals 49. Or excuse me, a squared plus, excuse me, 49, which is 7 squared, equals 11 squared, which is 121. We need to get a squared by itself. So we subtract 49 from both sides. 
we get a squared equals 72. a is going to be the square root of 72, which we can pull out the uh, 36 out of here, because 72 is just 2 times 36. All we're doing is we're simplifying radicals here. So if this is a little fuzzy, don't worry too much about it, because you can just review a little bit of simplifying radicals. The square root of 72 is the same thing as 6 times the square root of 2. So my adjacent side, we've used Pythagorean theorem to say that this is the, this side is the square root of 72, or more eloquently, the square root 6 times the square root of 2 for this side. So my adjacent is going to be 6 times the square root of 2. Uh, we can make this guy a little bit nicer. Let's get that radical out of the bottom. Multiply it square root of 2 over square root of 2. We get 11 times the square root of 2 on the top. And on the bottom, that's 6 times uh, the square root of 2 times square root of 2 is just going to be 6 times 2. So this is going to be 11 times square root of 2 over 6 times 2, which is 12. And we are done. The secant of theta is going to equal 11 times the square root of 2 over 12. That's it. If you find yourself missing one of these sides, use Pythagorean theorem to find out what that missing side will be. All right. Remember Sokotoa, remember these. Remember this picture. Copy it, think about it, write haiku about it. Remember it, and you will do awesome.